In today's episode, we're looking at players who have been overperforming over the last week. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Again, a lot of fantasy trade deadlines have passed. We know that. Some haven't, so you can take this as sell high moments, but it's also a good idea just to see which players are outperforming their uh, rest of season expectations, why that may be happening whether there's any sustainability in it at all. And that's what we're going to do on today's show. So let's do that right now on today's show. The first thing we look at is players who are sell high or overperformers in category leagues. Let's start with the wiki, Chris Boucher. It's been a bloody roller coaster for Chris Boucher this season. He's the 64th ranked player over the course of the year. There's been stretches where he's been outside the top 150. And now over the last week, he's the ninth ranked player. And realistically, it nearly always just comes down to minutes for this bloke. 31 minutes over the last three games, 21 points, 12 rebounds, three blocks, a true shooting of 64%, which includes 92 from the line and 53 from the field, like absolutely elite numbers. But who knows? Who knows where we go from here? Do do we get Ken Birch starting and playing 25 minutes a night because the Raptors need to stay big, as Nick Nurse said? Do we get more small ball where Pascal Siakam cuts in at center? I I just find it really tough to look at Boucher and go, yeah, he'll be playing 30 minutes a night from here on out. It'd be awesome for fantasy. We know that he would put up big numbers in that scenario, but as a realistic expectation with the way that Nurse has used him this year, the way that Nurse has used him last year, the way that Nurse has spoken about him at literally any opportunity he has had the opportunity to do so, um, you would find that pretty um, pretty surprising, I think, to see Boucher get this amount of minutes. So, you know, if you're selling high, you're doing it for a top 40 guy because if he does maintain 28 minutes and he's a top 40 player, like there's no doubt. So otherwise, you just ride it out. This is why, you know, a lot of people were, were pretty, keen on, um, pretty keen on dropping him. Uh, when he was having that lean patch, but this is why that it just takes it just takes a couple of minutes. It just takes a couple of minutes, and then you blow through your ceiling, and that's uh... giggity. Yeah, exactly, and that's exactly what Boucher has been doing, absolutely blowing through everyone's ceiling. Let's talk about the next guy on the list, Jonas Vasilevskiy. Yeah, holy shit, he's been unbelievable. The sixth ranked player over the last week. Now, long time listeners to the show, even new time listeners, because I bring it up a lot. I know, but. Will remember me saying back when he was with Toronto, Dwayne Casey, get your head out of your ass, play this guy 30 minutes, and he, I think I said he'd be a top 50 player. Um, all right, he played 32 minutes, he's a top 10 player. The The ability here has been always obvious for Valanciunas, it's just that opportunity's never been given, and the quibbles with his defense, I think, were overblown. But in saying all that, yeah, 32 minutes a night. Should he play 30 minutes a night moving forward? Probably. I, I'm not 100% convinced that he will, but there's a distinct possibility. But there is a few things here that we need to look at. He's averaging 25 points and 15 rebounds. Like they are big numbers, huge numbers in terms of where we sit like per 36 compared to the season. Like that scoring is up you know, five and a half points per 36. His block rate's up from one block per 36 to 2.5 per 36. He's blocking 2.3 in these four games. His free throws are up from 78 to 88. He's actually at 94% from the line over the last eight games. That is going to change. His field goal percentage is at 70%. He's at 58 for the season. Now, he's been steadily climbing. He's at 65 over the last two weeks. But that's coming on the back of 57% three-point shooting as well. Now, not actually, that's not true. That's being disingenuous. It's not coming on the back of that because only 6% of his shots are from three. But it is still a number that's very high. But he's hitting his twos at like 66%. I love Valanciunas. 
I think he's really good, and I think he's been underrated and underused for years. I do not think that really much of this is uh, sustainable. The 32 minutes, sure. The 73 true shooting, no way. 2.3 blocks, get get lost. What are you talking about? No way. So uh, can he be a top 50 guy? Yeah, very easily, very easily. But you will those other things maintain? I would have to suggest probably probably not would be my guess. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the way that I'd be looking at it anyway. I, I just think that yeah, he's been awesome. Jaron Jackson is going to return at some point, but he won't be playing big minutes, and Valanciunas has been that bloody good. Who's been the Grizzlies' best player this year? Is it Valanciunas? Probably is, yeah. Or is it Kyle Anderson? Who is their best player this season? Man, that's a question. Drop that in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. I don't know the answer to it. Let's look at Miles Bridges, who has been fine this year, 109th ranked player. Now, Ball's out, Haywood's out, and they've started him, and he's gone, right, let's go. Now, he was a guy that I was pretty big on as a sleeper last year because I looked at this Hornets team and go, man, who's going to score? Like, who, who is going to do who is gonna do this? And it turned out not to be Bridges. He played 30 minutes a night last year. He had a usage of under 20% and was the 151st ranked player, and it was a complete wet fart. But now, the, what he's doing, this, and this always shits me, what he's doing at the moment is sort of the expectation I had for him last year. The opportunities there, like, go sick. 36th ranked player over the last two weeks, 19th in the last week. Let's look at these last six games. He's averaging 18 points in 34 minutes with three threes, six rebounds, a steal, and 0.8 blocks. Um, the shooting has been unbelievably impressive. He was at 50, 42% last year. He's at 51 this season. He's taken his free throws up from 81 to 88 over the course of the year, 91 in the last three games. He's hitting 41% of his threes over the last month, 40% over the last 25 games. Look, these are really, really strong numbers. But it's only now that he started to explode into that top 100 zone as he's gone from 28 to 34 minutes a night. The usage has gone up in that time from 15 up to 19. Still not a high usage player, but pairing that with an improvement in efficiency. He's been awesome. Now, I look at these numbers and I go, I'm not certain that it's 70% true shooting for a wing is realistic. And by not certain, I mean, I'm bloody 100% positive it's not realistic. 65% on his twos and 46 on his threes. Like, that's not going to stick. But the opportunity will. The minutes will. The nice defensive stats will. But we're just looking at a drop in efficiency there, which probably takes him back to being like, you know, the 60th or, or 70th ranked player rather than a guy that's, you know, knocking on the door of the top 20. Guys, who who's, who is it? Who is it this week? Who is the Michelob Ultra player of the week? It, it has. To, I think it has to be Jonas Valanciunas. I know, we, I know we just talked about him and he was awesome, but he is the guy that brought us so much enjoyment this week, so much happiness. Because with Mikola Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. 2.6 carbs, 95 grams, 95 calories, sorry, 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories. That sort of joy, it, only, it creates success. And enjoyment isn't the end game, it is the only game. And Jonas has provided that for us with those numbers this week. The sixth ranked player this week, Valentinus. 25 and 15 with 2.3 blocks. Amazing stuff from Jonas. Um, are you happy because you win? Well, hey, if you win your fantasy league, you're going to be pretty bloody happy. Or do you win because you're happy? Maybe it's a mixture of both. Michelob Ultra is here, and they are providing that happiness for you. And Jonas Valanciunas, he's happy to be awarded the Michelob Ultra Player of the Week. All right, let's go on to Karis Levert. Levert has been, I don't know, a bit of a tease at times throughout his career. Never been a top 100 fantasy player, which I think would surprise a lot of people. Um, he is this year, 74th ranked player in, seven, in 31 minutes. But over the last two weeks, he's really stepped it up. The 38th ranked player, averaging 20 points with five assists. There are a couple of things there we need to look at. It's the 50% shooting for me that, that really is going to have some sort of level of decrease. Now, he's a guy that has net, his best career, so his best season shooting-wise was his rookie year, where he shot 45%. Then it went to 44, then to 43, then for 42 and a half. And now he's at 43 this year. So we've got a pattern of him being a bad shooter. But over the last two weeks, 50% shooting. Now, to be fair to Karras, that's coming including 26% shooting from three, which is objectively shithouse. But the 60% shooting on his twos, when he's never been outside of his rookie year above 48%, where he was 57 in his rookie year in limited attempts, 
Um, I have my doubts about that being able to continue. So there is going to be a drop-off. We know the percentage fluctuations vary multiple categories. You drop your field goal percentage, you might drop your threes, although I don't know how they could drop any further shooting 26%, but you drop your field goal percentage, you drop your scoring as well. And I think there is a risk of that here with Levert. Not to say he's going to drop significantly, but moving from a top 40 player to a top 60 player is probably the realistic expectation from Levert as we move forward. And I know this bloke's on a lot of waiver wires, but he's also been added in a lot of spots. So I think it's worth mentioning that Corey Joseph is playing out of his bloody mind. The 60th ranked player over the last week playing just way too many minutes, just ridiculous amount of minutes. 31 minutes a night for Joseph. Uh, 15 points per game is excellent. 9.3 assists is unbelievable. A steal per game. He's even chipping in with 0.7 blocks. Oh, and he's shooting 57% from the field, which includes 61% from two. Now, he's been pretty good from two this year, 53% from two-point range. This is a dude who has consistently been in the 45 to 46 point uh, percentage for two-pointers range. So he's just out of control. The usage is up at a career-high level over the last two weeks as well. And the assist rate is blowing us out of the water. This dude's assist per 36 this year are 5.2. His career best assist per 36 are 5.6 back with Indiana in 1819. Over the last two weeks, he's at 10. 10. Double the assist per 36. Is Corey Joseph this good of a passer? No. Is there a focus in his game? Absolutely. So I do think that he can maintain a, a much higher assist per 36 number than we've seen. But... Pair that with the, what, 58% two-point shooting and that insane assist rate and the way too high minutes and the way too high usage, I fear there's going to be some sort of drop-off coming from uh, Corey Joseph. Let's have a look now at points leagues. First two guys, we've talked about them already. Boucher, who's playing at a bananas level, 47 fantasy points over the last week. That's up from the 30 he's averaging this season. That's a, that's a number which I don't really see maintaining, as I've mentioned already. Balanchunas, averaging 37 this year, 57 over the last week, 53 over the last week, sorry. And for all those reasons that we mentioned below, big blocks, good minutes, huge percentage, um, big free throw increase, yeah, good rebound numbers. Uh, look, he can be a 40-point guy, no doubt, but 53 is probably pushing it. Let's talk Ravishing Rick Rubio. I'm recording this in the middle of the Wolves game, so I can't reference what happened in that game. But Rubio is up to 37 fantasy points over the last week. 26 minutes, 12 points per game, almost 8 assists and 2.7 steals. And there's your kicker, 2.7 steals for Rubio. I don't know what they're going to do long-term with Russell and Rubio. They've been bringing Russell off the bench and playing him and Rubio together a little bit, starting a Kogi there. Um, I don't know if that's a sustainable model for Chris Finch. If Rubio can get 27 minutes a night, he he can remain like a 26, 27 fantasy point per game player. But I I do have my doubts. Interestingly, since Russell's return, Rubio's scoring has increased. 10 points per game over the last five. And pair that with 2.2 steals. Remember, steals are worth three points in in fantasy points leagues. So you go from 1.5 to over 2.5. That's a three-point fantasy bump right there. And then you're scoring an extra four points per game, which Rubio is doing. And you're getting an extra assist per game, which is another 1.25. Sorry, 1.5 points. Um, yeah, that, that's there's your difference. And they all seem like small things. But do does Rubio continue to play 27 minutes a night as Russell moves back in? I, I have some doubts about that. Let's look at Dean Wadey Wade, who's averaging a robust 13 fantasy points per game this year. But ha, ah, over the last week, 33. Awesome. Like this is this is pick up a balls type stuff. 105th ranked player over the last two weeks, 27 fantasy points. 34 minutes, 12.6 rebounds, 1.3 steals. Great. But Kevin Love is back, and that's not impacting Wade. But Jarrett Allen could return on Wednesday. Larry Nance could return on Wednesday. And then where does Wade go? To be the fourth fourth big at best? Yeah, mixing it up with Isaiah Hartenstein off the bench in that fourth big man role. So it's great stuff from Wade at the moment. He's been an excellent streamer, but long-term, I don't really see how we can have too much faith in him. Let's go to Zach Levine. Levine was on the Buy Low show a couple of weeks ago, but this is what happens. You have peaks, you have troughs, and over the last week, he's averaging 53 fantasy points. It helps that he dropped 50 real-life points in one game, but that's not the only reason. 31 real-life points, 
that's that's great. That's up from his 28, so that that's a bonus. But 8.3 assists. Now I am not I'm not writing off the possibility that Levine and the increase assists, which are up to 6.7 over the last two weeks, that that could continue. I think there that is a chance because him and um, uh, what's his name? Is Bosa is big Bosa Bosa Zip Bosa bitch. Thanks for clearing that up, Perk. Uh, big Nikola Vucevic, he is putting up some really good pick and roll stuff with Vooch, and that is helping Levine's assist numbers. So while initially once he moved into the starting lineup with Sadaransky, his assists dropped way off. Now with Vooch there, we are seeing his assists jump back up again. And they are really, they're, they're taking off 6.7 over the last seven games. And that's something that can give him that extra boost in production. So while I think Levine can maintain a higher level, we're at a level there with that 31 points and eight assists with over six rebounds that probably isn't going to be able to maintain itself. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football might be over, but the NBA, the NHL, they're in full swing, and BetOnline even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. Real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. BetOnline has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds, and it's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head to the website, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to sign up today using our promo code LOCKEDON and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. And that will do it for me today, guys. Don't forget to follow Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. And then subscribe on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up. Ring the bell. Leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.